Blakes and I am so glad that you have tuned into my channel today. I, I was actually trying to go live but my connection wouldn't work for me so I decided to just film my message and upload it and um, I pray that uh, this conversation um, is fruitful for you. I pray that you get something out of it that might help you to move forward in your life your life and to uh, make some decisions that are healthy for you. I was just thinking about um, how necessary it is for an individual to move on uh, from a relationship that has moved on from you. Uh, and you know that a relationship has moved on from you when the person that you were quote unquote in relationship with um, is pulling away or has uh, clearly walked away, when that person has articulated in, in word or in deed that they want something other than you or the direction they're going in is not the direction that you're in. And some, for some reason or reasons, we find ourselves, you know, pulling and trying to hold on to people who have um, long since released us. And it's, it's, better for, it's better for you to feel the pain uh, of separation than to experience the pain of a totally wasted life, uh, trying to force yourself into um, the context of a person that has um, divorced you emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, divorced you. So there, you know, there comes a time when you just have to let go, period. And I'm reminded of, uh, when I, you know, just thinking from a biblical perspective, I'm reminded of Abraham, Abram and Hagar. Hagar was the, the maid or the slave even of his wife, Sarah, and when Abram and Sarah thought that they could not have a child. Sarah recommended to Abram that he would have a child uh, with Hagar, which was, you know, it was uh, customary then. And Hagar conceived the child. And when the child grew up a little bit and then Sarah had a kid, Sarah said, this girl has to go. And, and so Abraham Abram put Hagar out and Hagar did not create any friction. She did not fight it. Her heart was broken. She didn't know uh, where her next meal was coming from. She and her child were put out, but she gracefully uh, dislodged herself from that toxic scenario and God provided for Hagar and God provided for her son. How many, how many people uh, are watching this today or tonight or whenever you're watching it and uh, you're just kicking and you're holding on for dear life to something that is not even worth it. You're trying to maintain a connection with what amounts to poison. But let me make this statement um, and then we'll move forward. I have five things I want to share with you, five reasons why you have to let go. Sometimes, listen to this very carefully, sometimes God forces people out of our lives because we were not strong enough to put them out. Sometimes the person is leaving you because it was never ordained of God and this person does not fit into your divine destiny or your future and because you were not strong enough to put them out, God caused them to leave you. Now, listen to what the scripture says, and, and these are principles. It's a hard thing to release a person that you, you may have thought that you loved or you actually do love, but they don't love you back. And you don't want to be in a one-way love affair. 
it's a hard thing to release a person. It's a hard thing to let relationships go, especially, of course, romantic relationships. It's extremely hard to let go of someone that you had uh, all of the intentions in the world of building a future with, hopefully building a life with, but they had other ideas. It's even hard to let friendships go. It is. But it's better for you to suffer the pain of letting go than to experience the trauma and the devastation of holding on. Listen to what the Word of God says in Hebrews 12 and 11. Now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after the chastening, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Now, this text is talking about how God sometimes uses difficult situations and how God sometimes uh, makes us uncomfortable to perfect us. And how in the moment of that chastening, uh, it's, there's nothing joyous about it, but it's actually, it's, it's a grievance, it, you know, it's grievous. But after the chastening, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto those who are exercised by it. Let me tell you something. The pain of letting a person go is very, very difficult and very, very painful, but it is not for, it is not permanent. It is not forever. And if you just embrace the chastening of that experience, clearly I made you know, a poor relational choice. I intended on this going the distance, but it's not. I chose the wrong person. I, I made myself vulnerable to the wrong person. I've done X, Y, and Z, and now I have to let go. It hurts, but it doesn't hurt as bad as it will hurt if you hold on to something that is constantly degrading you, defaming you, poisoning your self-esteem. If you allow the chastening to happen, it ultimately ends in your development. Now, let me make another statement before I get into the five reasons I want to give you to, tonight. Sometimes, and you may need to write this somewhere, sometimes the heart has to break for the soul to heal. Sometimes the heart has to break for the soul to heal. I get questions every day about soul ties. I wrote the book, Soul Ties, you know, breaking the ties that bind. And so people send me questions every day about soul ties. And quite honestly, the biggest part of breaking a soul tie is embracing the pain of letting go. The biggest part of breaking a soul tie is embracing the pain of dislodging, disconnecting from that individual. Because sometimes the heart has to break for the soul to heal. You say to me, oh, but pastor, my heart is just breaking. You just don't know the pain. It's supposed to hurt. It's supposed to hurt. But when the hurting is done, the development takes place. The evolution happens. So let's get into this, five, um, five reasons you have to let go. Number one, number one reason you have to let go, what you tolerate, you fertilize. What you tolerate, you fertilize. And see, right now you're trying to hold on to a person, you're trying to love a person that's not loving you back, which is really the ultimate disrespect. And if you continue to tolerate this kind of behavior, it does not get better from here. It does not get better from here. And, and quite honestly, if, if you really paused for a minute to think about what's really your, what's the draw for you? What's drawing you to this individual? What makes you such a diehard for this relationship? When if you really sat down and you looked at this thing, this relationship is really unfulfilling. Um, there's nothing exciting about it. It's uh, probably in some context ungodly. Uh, you, you're not really, you know, you're not getting anything out of it. You're just really kind of married to the idea of the relationship. 
and you've invested so much time and energy into it, you feel foolish for it not, you know, going the distance. But the reality is you're getting absolutely nothing out of it. And in some cases you're getting abuse out of it. And what you, what you tolerate, you fertilize. If, if you continue to, uh, to be so weak for a person that you can't let them go when they tell you clearly, I want to leave, and you're, you're almost on your knees begging a person to stay, well, that emboldens that person's disregard for you. It, it makes it even the more um, uh, 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 abrasive, aggressive. What you tolerate, you fertilize. It will not get better from here. It will get worse if you do not move on with your life. The Bible says in Galatians 5 and 9, and this, of course, is speaking of sin, it says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Just a little yeast will cause a thing to rise. And if you tolerate just a little disrespect, if you tolerate just a little disregard, uh, it doesn't get smaller from here. It gets bigger. It doesn't, it doesn't diminish. It, it, it um, magnifies. So number one, what you tolerate, you fertilize. You got to go. And you have to let this person move on because you cannot tolerate the future that you're creating. Number two, second reason you have to let go. If you do not establish a floor, you'll end up in an abyss. And an abyss is a dark, almost never ending hole, so to speak. And when I say if you do not establish a floor, in other words, if you don't have a limit as it pertains to how, how low you will go to maintain some status with um, some random person, and apparently they are random because you really don't know them. You know, you thought you knew them, but you really didn't know them. And if, if there's no limit to how low you will go, to maintain some status of a relationship, a pseudo relationship, a fake relationship with a person that's not really committed to you, um, man, there's no, there's no end to how low they will bring you. If you don't have a floor, you may very well end up in an abyss, a, a never ending free fall, so to speak. Some things are a matter of principle. And if, if you don't see what principles do for us is principles put a floor into our lives so that we can go no lower than this. And some things are, you know, when you allow a person to push you Beyond your principles, you got to first of all have the floor of principles. When, when a person begins to threaten your principles, then it's a matter of, do I please God? Do I hold, you know, am I, am I going to be true to myself? Or am I going to lose myself for the sake of some relationship that's not even returning the favor? The Bible puts it this way in Romans 1.28. And again, these are principles that we're taking that are applicable. In Romans 20, 1, 28, it says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, and what does that speak of? When one retains God in his or her knowledge, he or she is retaining a certain standard or principles, divine principles. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And a reprobate mind is a mind that has gone so far, it can no longer even discern between right and wrong, sin and righteousness. When you allow a person to push you and to drag you down to, with no, no limits and no restrictions, at some point you become reprobate and you don't even realize the difference between right and wrong, good and bad, honor and dishonor. 
So number one, what you tolerate, you fertilize. Number two, if you don't establish a floor, you'll end up in an abyss. Number three, I only have five. When a person dishonors you, the next move is on you to honor yourself. But you see, if you don't have a floor, you don't even realize you're being dishonored. You don't even realize you're being disrespected. You don't even realize you're being disregarded. When a person dishonors you, the next and only move is for you to honor yourself by doing what? Moving away from that individual. When a person has expressed a disdain, a dishonor, a disregard, a disrespect for you, it is your responsibility to shift gears and to make certain that you put yourself in a space and in a place that is separate and apart from this individual. And if they're doing you the favor of moving on out of your life, let them go. Interesting, um, when you read any of uh, the accounts of the prodigal son in the Gospels, um, in the Bible, you read of, you read of a, a woman that had a coin she lost. There are like three parables in there. Uh, the woman they had a woman who had a coin she lost. The Bible says she swept the whole house until she found it. There was a shepherd that lost a sheep. The Bible says he left the ninety and nine and went to find, and went to find the one and retrieved it. And then there was a father whose son decided that he was going to leave his father's home and go to a far country, and the father let him go. Interesting. They swept for a coin, they searched for a sheep, but the father let his son go. Why did the father let the son go? The prodigal son, when he says to his father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me, he dishonored his father. When he said, I need to leave your home because I'm searching for something better, he dishonored his father. And when a person's, listen to this very well, when a person's heart has turned from you, you do not possess the power, nor do you possess the authority to turn that person's heart back towards you. The only thing you can do with a person whose heart is turned from you is to let them go. If you try to hold on to a person whose heart has turned from you, you, you simply toxify or you poison your own life and your own environment. The father let the son go because the son's heart had turned. Now watch this. It was painful for the father because when you read the account, it's, it's indicated that the father was searching for the boy every day because the boy went to the far country, spent everything, he lost everything, and he was starving. And the Bible says he came to himself and he humbled himself, said, I'm going back to my father and I'm going back as a servant. And the Bible says when he was a long way off, the father saw him and ran to him. Meaning what? The father's heart was broken that his son left. But the father was wise enough to know he had to let him go. Number four, you are really clinging when you're trying to hold on to a person that's pulling away from you. You know, you, you, you're you pulling this way and they're, they're pulling that way. And you have this tug of war. You're really in most in most cases, you're really clinging to hopes and memories. You're remembering, uh, you know, the, 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 the good times, however few or many they may have been, or you're clinging to potential. You're clinging to hope of what it can possibly be, you know, uh, what we can become. But you see, the, the thing about that is if this individual is pulling away from you, it means that they don't share the same vision. And Amos 3 and 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? If if you're the only one that's hopeful and the other individual 
is in a posture where they have divorced you emotionally and mentally, you're only hurting yourself. Look, listen to what the scripture says in Proverbs 13 and 12. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. In other words, if I keep hoping for something and I never get it, all it's doing is poisoning my soul. Hope deferred, hope that continues to be put on the back burner and I'm constantly waiting for it and hoping for it makes the heart sick. You're poisoning yourself with your diligence to something that is clearly not in your best interest. And then number five, and then I'm done. <sighs> you will never be five reasons you need to let go. Number five, you will never be fulfilled trying to sustain a relationship that is not mutual. Back to Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? You cannot be, you cannot be fulfilled in a relationship that you are the only party trying to sustain it. You're the only one doing the loving. You're the only one doing the fighting. The other person is trying to go and you're the only one trying to hold on. Uh, that my brother, that my sister will leave you a most miserable, unfulfilled and empty individual. And all it is really doing is breaking your heart to, the, to an extent possibly that you won't even be in condition to love somebody in the future who will truly love you back. So you got to let go. You got to let go. And it's really simple as that. When someone says to you in word or deed that, I don't value you and I'm moving on from you. I want out of this relationship. You have to let go. It's going to hurt. Absolutely, it's going to hurt. But you have to let go. You got to let go. And I'll say this to you. It gets better. The pain doesn't last forever. It gets better but you got to let go and you, you must let go sooner than later. The enemy, the devil would love nothing more than to waste your life in pursuit of someone that doesn't even deserve you. And another thing you have to consider, maybe this is number six. Maybe I actually had six. As long as you're in pursuit as long as you're preoccupied with trying to attain a person that's emotionally unavailable and a person that is clearly not predestined for your future, you know what happens? You make yourself emotionally unavailable for the right person. As long as you're in pursuit of the wrong person, you're never available for the right person. You gotta let go. May I pray for you? I know that all of you that watch my YouTube channel are not necessarily Christians or uh, some of you are not even believers. Some atheists actually watch my channel and get wisdom from it. And I thank God for that. But may I pray for you? I don't usually do this, but may I pray for you today? Father, I thank you for, I thank you for the, the grace to be able to discuss such a, a topic. And God, I thank you for causing the comforting and the healing balm of the Holy Spirit to rest upon every person that hears this. Some, dear God, are really struggling because they have invested everything in this particular relationship. And now the person wants out and God, they don't know what to do. I thank you for just breathing upon them afresh now and allowing that peace that you've allowed me to experience so many days, allow that peace to rest upon them. And God, I command now the peace of Jesus Christ to take over their hearts 
and the wisdom of God to take over their minds that they will make the right and the godly decision in Jesus' name. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. I would love for you, Lisa and I would love to hear from you. You can email either of us or both of us at uh, PastorRCBlakes at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to visit my website at rcblakes.com. Uh, you can pick up my books there. We have some exciting things. In fact, we have some new products. I just, uh, we, well, getting ready to release some new things, some new products, some new books and what have you that I think will be a blessing to you. Thank you so much for your time today. And just know that we are praying for you and you are on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. God bless you until next time. I'm R.C. Blakes, Jr.